say the words that you want I'm never gonna feel the shame like you do I'm never gonna stretch my shame to be with you I only need you for a day Cause I only want Okay, so just to clarify, Failure did use Marshall and Fender amps and a whole bunch of effects pedals, both live and in the studio in the 90s. But when we rebooted in 2014, we had to find a solution for playing live because those rigs were gone. And that's when my longtime friend Billy Howardell of A Perfect Circle turned me on to the Fractal Audio Axe Effects. It didn't take me long to realize that the level of realism had taken a ginormous leap forward. Combined with the fact that you have access to a staggering number of great sounding effects, and I soon came to the conclusion that the Axe Effects was going to be the way to go for failure. My name's Ken Andrews, and welcome to Episode 7, all about the Fractal Axe Effects and failure guitar sounds. At the top of the clip, I was rehearsing with the stems from Fantastic Planet. We've been restoring 
and remixing and remastering everything for our upcoming box set. Yeah, so that's that's kind of part of that whole situation. And the other benefit of, of now having the multitracks for the entire catalog is that it makes rehearsing by yourself a lot more fun. It's like playing with the album, sans your part. So here we are, Saturday Savior Stems. Never had these before. Drums. Bass down. Guitar stem from the album. I'm going to now mute uh, the original guitars. Um, and here is um, uh, what I just played at the beginning of the video. Let me um, pull up um, the Axe FX uh, USB uh, editor for your computer. Here's my Saturday Savior guitar preset. The way that we organize our performances within each song, there are up to eight different scenes, which can be wildly different sounds. Even though I did map out scenes all the way to scene eight, in all practicality, av after having played this song live now for quite a while since we rebooted. I found it just makes more sense to really only use two sounds in this song. If I can get away with it, I generally try to have the least amount of scenes possible. The way they've styled the user interface makes sense to anyone who's actually run a real guitar rig. Each block is sort of a hardware module, if you will, and the cables go from left to right. That's how the signal path flows. Then you use this little block that sends your signal down to another row and you've got a whole nother row of possibilities of blocks the input corresponds to a physical input on the box in this case i'm using input two because they're on xlrs and i use wireless so the output of my wireless receiver is xlr okay then after those we go into a compressor none of these are on they're here if i need them or want them at some point and then we split the signal off into two amp heads first clean out super verb vibrato And this is the second clean amp, which is the Princestone 5F2. And then here's both the cleans together. When we change scenes here, these two amps are both changing channels. Channel switch the amps within the blocks and you could keep your two amp thing going for your clean sound and for your dirty sound. The Friedman Brown Eye. That's in terms of uh, big chunky heads, that's the one I use the most. And now we will hear the Bogfish Strato. And then both the dirties together. Then those come back together, however, they're, the outputs are panned, so even though these are coming together, they're not being summed. This is 
a stereo through to a graphic EQ, doing some brightening. Uh, then I'm sending down to the next row of blocks. And I've got this cabinet, which is a cabinet I started using a long time ago. It's a 4x12, you know, Marshall-esque kind of cabinet that has a nice fat bottom to it. Then we go into what I would generally call almost like a, a micro pitch shift effect, which I definitely like on guitar, used it on Fantastic Planet a lot. Then I have a multi-brand compressor to just control things a little bit and give me a little bit more brighter sound because I'm boosting the output level of the high band there. Then I go into what I just call my 20 millisecond stereo split delay. You set the um, left time to one millisecond and the right to 20 milliseconds and you have that same kind of effect, almost like doubling. And then and here is with the uh, 20 millisecond split off. And here is with it on. And then without the delay. It's, it's not a stereo, but it's still... It just hits in a different way when you have those two heads that have slightly different attacks combined. But with the delay, it's, it's very stereo, especially when you're listening on in-ears. And then finally into a very low mixed plate reverb. Then it goes to um, the output and you can have all your different scene levels kind of volumed out here. I have a guitar, a specific guitar made by Electrical Guitar Company. It's kind of my signature model with them that has two outputs on it. It has a regular magnetic output and it has a piezo or piezo. So in the songs where I'm playing that, guitar, you can actually pick which pickup is going to go to the next block in the chain. Uh, this is looking at the magnetic output. If I wanted to look at the piezo output, I would disable that one and enable this guy, which is looking at the right only, and this guy's looking at the left only. That's how I do the switching between the pickups on the Ken Andrews signature guitar. This has been talked about a little bit online because I, I think the most recent rig rundown, we pulled up this patch for Undone. It's, you know, hovering right around 75% CPU on the Axe FX3. I need more power. More power. This train right here is the magnetic path, and for the first patch, going guitar into pedal phaser into amp, which is the Friedman Brown Eye. <laughs> so that's the brown eye with a phaser and some delay. Then we go into the main patch. <laughs> Everything gets very stereo, obviously. The TC Electronic um, doubler pedal is in the back of the rack, and this is how I, I send to it. It's just a different way of doubling that is different than the 20 millisecond split thing because the delay that they're creating in their in their pedal is like it's like a digital algorithm it it doesn't repeat so you get It's not a utopian doubling effect. Depending on what you're playing, it could sometimes come off as a slow flange, but it does provide an alternative to a simple delay, especially when you want your split to be a bit tighter. I'm gonna bypass the magnetic path. Turning off the pitch block. It's a very piezo sound. Doesn't sound like an acoustic guitar, but I kind of like it for this song. 
because it's just supposed to be behind the electric, just providing a you know slightly different dimension. It's almost like a bell type texture backing up the electric guitar. So that's coming in on this input block. It's going to a multi-band, and you can see I'm grabbing some of those high peaks, and then it's going into a jazz 120. Then it comes down to uh, the third line here, or fourth line, I guess, and joins the electric. Also, um, this is not getting a cabinet. Maybe it should, I don't know. I think I tried it and I didn't like it. Now let's hear the magnetic side. A lot of um, just uh, modulation happening, trying to get things to really um, ring and rub against each other. Then it joins up with the piezo here at the micro pitch shift. Then we go through a stereo enhance, another uh, level of uh, multiband compression that's handling both sounds, an eighth note delay and a quarter note delay, a reverb, large plate with 30%, putting the piezo back in. There's a lot of sound going on right here in this patch. Now, as much as I love the axe effects, I do have a few critiques I'd like to mention. Why can't we have more simultaneous amps? I absolutely love using two clean amps for clean sounds and two dirty amps for distorted sounds. But I want to be able to blend and fade between two clean amps and two distorted amps, which requires four simultaneous amp blocks. As I understand it, there are dedicated chips for the amp blocks as they are the most CPU hungry. Why not just include another set of those chips? Maybe they are too expensive? How about offering a premium 4 amp capable Axe effects model? I realize that Fractal has been focusing on sound quality and realism and it shows. But at a certain point, if the UI becomes so unwieldy, it just becomes a chore to edit your sounds, and then your creativity gets kind of squashed. But at the end of the day, I think my complaints are tiny when stacked against how useful and inspiring the Axe Effects has been for my band. It's not just about being able to mimic sounds you've already recorded. It's opened up a huge avenue of experimentation and, and crazy routing possibilities. Take this sound from our 2015 song, Counterfeit Sky. One expression pedal is controlling three different elements to create this patch. There's a pitch shifter, a wah, and a volume pedal, and they're all being manipulated by one expression pedal simultaneously. This is not something we would have been able to do in the 90s. Being able to come up with weird ideas like that is something that we really relish, and it's one of the main reasons we love using the Axe Effects in the studio. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little exploration of guitar sounds today, and if you did, please don't forget to like the video. If you've been meaning to, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe? Come on, just click it. Just do it. Later.